Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to use dbscan clustering algorithm to form the clusters on a given data set. This is the solved example number two. The link for other example is given in the description below. In this case, we have been given a data set with uh, five points. Also, a similarity matrix is given to us. Given this particular data set, we need to apply the dbscan algorithm with the similarity threshold of 0.8 and min points is greater than or equal to 2. That means the minimum number of uh, points required in each cluster is uh, 2 here. That is each cluster should contain 2 or more points in this case. Given this particular data set, we need to find the core, border and noise points. Finally, we need to create the clusters over here. So this is the data set given to us. Minimum points is equal to 2. That means uh, minimum number of points in each cluster should be 2 here. And the similarity index is 0.8. That means uh, the minimum similarity index should be 0.8. Uh, if it is 0.8 or more, the meaning of that one is the two points are near to each other. Now uh, we will try to identify the nearest point or the similar point for P1 here. For P1, if you look at this particular uh, similarity index values, uh, for P1, P1 is the nearest one. Of course, uh, that will be the case. But if you look at the remaining four points, all of them are having uh, index or the similarity value less than 0.8 here. The meaning of this one is P2, P3, P4 and P5 are not similar to P1 in this case. So that's the reason I have written dash here. Coming back to the next uh, point that is P2. If you look at this particular P2's row, Again, uh, P2 contains here 1. The meaning is P2 is similar to P2. That is for sure. But if you look at the other values, this is the only value where the similarity index is more than 0.8 here. So that's the reason you can say that P2 is similar to P5 in this case. Now coming back to the next one, that is P3. If you look at this particular P3, apart from P3, we have one uh, value that is uh, 0.85, which is more than this particular 0.8 for P5 here, the meaning of this one is for P3, P5 is the similar uh, point in this case. So that is what I have written here. Coming back to the next one, that is P4. Apart from P4, that is uh, 1.0 we have, which is greater than 0.8, that's for sure. We don't have any other uh, similarity index, which is greater than 0.8 here. So that's the reason you can say that for P4, we don't have any similar points here, apart from P4 in this case. Coming back to the last uh, point, uh, that is P5. For P5, we have uh, uh, P2 similarity index is 0.98, which is greater than 0.8. P3's uh, similarity index is 0.85. Again, it is greater than 0.8. And P5, of course, it is 1.0. It is greater than or equal to 0.8 here. So that's the reason you can say that for P5, P5 is similar. That is for sure. Along with that, P2 and P3 are also similar uh, points in this case. So that is what I have written here. So once you write this particular uh, similar uh, points in this case, now we need to identify which one of these particular point is a core point, border point and a noise point over here. So for that reason, uh, I have written this particular table. Now I will consider this particular P1. Now if you look at this particular P1, in this particular group, we have only one point that is P1. But how many points we are expecting in each cluster? Minimum two here. So that's the reason this particular P1 is considered as a noise in this case because it is less than 2 in this case. Coming back to the second one that is P2, P5, we have two points here and these two is equivalent to minimum number of points. So that's the reason you can say that P2 is a core point here. Coming back to the third one that is P3, P5, P3, P5 contains uh, two points again because uh, two points are there. Uh, we will consider this P3 as a core point here. For P4, we have only one point in this case which is less than 2. So that's the reason it is considered as noise. The last point that is P5 contains three points over here, including P5. Because it is greater than 2, it will be considered as core point here. Now, once you find the core and the noise points, uh, these out of these particular two noise points, there is a possibility that uh, it may be a border point also. That is uh, a particular point may be a border to two, what you can say that the clusters. So that can be identified something like this. I will consider again the first noise point P1 here. We will consider this particular P1 as a border point if this P1 is a part of any of the core points here. So how many core points are there? P2, P3, P5 are there. So if P1 is a part of any of this particular core point, then it will be considered as a border point here. 
but p1 is not a part of uh, a core point p2 it is not a part of a core point p3 it is not a part of core point p5 here so that's the reason it will be considered as noise only if it is a part of any of those particular core point we would have considered it as a border here coming back to the second noise point that is p4 again p4 is not a part of uh, p2 p3 and p5 that is the core points that's the reason this p4 again remains as a noise here it will not become a border point here now uh, if you look at these particular things p1 and p4 are noise p2 p3 and p5 are the core points here also we don't have any uh, border points uh, in this particular given data set with respect to each of these particular core points we will get one cluster so the first cluster is uh, p2 and p5 second cluster is uh, p3 p5 and the third cluster is p2 p3 and p5 in this particular case so in this video i have discussed uh, how can we use uh, db scan clustering algorithm on a given data set to find the core noise and border points as well as how can we form these particular clusters over here i hope the concept of uh, db scan clustering algorithm is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching